What's good, y'all? It's your boy Havoc with Final Round. Bob Arum spoke recently, and it was brilliant. He came up with a proposal that I fucking, obviously I loved it as a fan. I was a little bit apprehensive because I'm thinking, well, yeah, I wanna see this as a fan, but can it realistically play out? Because what are the benefits for Anthony Joshua and his team and Eddie Hearn? But then I thought about it and I was like, even if you're Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn and his team, this is beneficial for you to do this. So what Bob Aaron proposed was like, was this, how about Anthony Joshua take a step back and let Usyk step up and take on the winner of Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury for an undisputed heavyweight champ. Oh, I loved it. I loved it as a fan. Look, do I wanna see the rematch between Usyk and Joshua? Sure. Do I wanna see it immediately? Not necessarily. You know, I would like to see Usyk go for undisputed against whoever the winner of Wilder and Fury is gonna be. I can wait for the rematch. I can wait for the rematch with Joshua and Usyk and it will always be there. It will always be there for Joshua, regardless of if Usyk wins or not. You saw that stadium with Usyk and Joshua, it was packed. That fight will always be there. But here's the thing, this benefits everybody. It benefits the boxing fans, it benefits the promoters, it benefits every single fighter in this scenario. Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Alessandro Usyk. Everybody, everybody's gonna get a fair shake. You know, now it's not gonna be beneficial in the end towards everybody because at the end of the day, the fighters are gonna have to fight and they're gonna have to prove themselves. But nonetheless, everybody's gonna get a fair shake. And once again, the fans are gonna get to see the fights they wanna see. And most importantly, man, look, as a pettit competitor, I get it. If you're Anthony Joshua, you don't wanna give your opponent anything, right? You don't want them to be in the place you think you should be, even though he lost fair and square. And I don't really think he has that right to really dictate the circumstances moving forward of the heavyweight landscape. But nonetheless, I get it. As a competitor, you don't want to give your opponent anything. But Anthony Joshua seems to be more of a happy, low, happy-go-lucky happy type dude anyways. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he doesn't seem to have like that Jordan killer mentality. He seems like he'll go wherever his team pushes him. And he even said to himself, hey, I'll fight Fury or Wilder without the belts. Okay. If that's the case, take a step back, man. Let Usyk do something rare that the late and great Evander Holyfield did. Consolidate the belts at cruiserweight and heavyweight as undisputed. That is rare, it is hard to do. He beat you fair and square. Now it's time to step back and let this man do his thing, okay? Let him do his thing because you don't get many opportunities regardless of you're a hardcore competitor. You know, sometimes you have to realize like this player, this competitor or whatever you, whatever the sport or realm of competition is, like they're onto something great. And you know what, this doesn't happen frequently I need to take a step back and let greatness happen. Now, that doesn't mean even if this scenario does play out, doesn't mean it's gonna go down, doesn't mean Usyk's gonna go and win, win all the marbles, right? He could lose. But nonetheless, like I said, that fight will still be there with Joshua and Usyk, regardless of if Usyk wins or loses or not. But imagine this, if you're Joshua, if you're Eddie Hearns and you put your freaking feelings aside you know i understand he's salty right now he wants to chomp at the bit i get it <coughs> but think about this if you're anthony joshua's team this is why it benefits you you can kind of sit back go back to the drawing board you know hell get some rest if you're anthony joshua enjoy that paycheck you just got you know let the heavyweight landscape clear out. Let it set, let everything kind of play out. You go back to the drawing board, get the right trainers, start bulking back up, 
looking to be the guy you were before Andy Ruiz, that seek and destroyer. And game plan all the way up until you get the opportunity to jump back on scene. Because think about this as well. Usyk, let's say you let Usyk do his thing. He's going to have another matchup, maybe even two. You're going to be able to go to the drawing board and see how this guy fares against more heavyweights. You're going to be able to strategize. Because even if Joshua does take this rematch, it's not guaranteed he'll win, obviously. There's a good chance that he could get fucked up even more. He could get knocked out, you know, or TKO. Obviously, he took a terrible approach, and it would be very interesting to see if he is more front foot oriented in the second fight and, you know, putting pressure and being relentless. But even that, you're not guaranteed to beat Usyk. Chisora did move forward on Usyk, and he still lost. Now, it wasn't the best pressure. It wasn't the most tactical pressure, right? But nonetheless, he still lost. So even if Joshua does come with the right approach, he still could lose. He still could lose. So let this man move forward, all right? And you'll get your rematch in time, but let him move forward and go back to the drawing board. Let him take some fights, you know, whether it be for Undisputed or maybe he takes, you know, a mandatory and then goes to Undisputed. You're going to have a chance to really game plan this man and see what works and what doesn't. See what other guys are doing against him. I think there's a good chance if Usyk move, moves forward, he, he can win, even against Tyson Fury. Believe it or not, I think that's a more interesting fight than people think. I know a lot of people are automatically jumping towards Tyson Fury versus Alessandro Usyk, but I think it might be a little bit more interesting than people think. I tend to lean towards Fury, obviously because of the size and the skills matched with it, but I wouldn't sleep on Usyk in that matchup. Styles make fights. And it would be very interesting to see how Tyson Fury would approach it. We don't know exactly what he would do. We don't know exactly if he would be able to press Usyk back like he did Deontay Wilder. Usyk can actually box. Deontay Wilder can't off the back foot. <laughs> and maybe he's gotten better, right, Wilder, from his last camp. But, man, he can't box like Usyk. He will never be able to box like Usyk. So I would be very intrigued with that. There is a chance Usyk can become undisputed heavyweight champ. I wouldn't sleep on that. And if you're Anthony Joshua, you sit back, you wait for the heavyweight landscape to clear. Okay. Now initiate your rematch clause. Let's say hypothetically Usyk becomes undisputed. Now you come back into the picture and you're fighting for all the fucking marbles. You have a great redemption story and opportunity to get your revenge. And then not only that, become the heavyweight undisputed champ of the world. Think about that. Now, I don't think he would do it. I, I, don't, I don't care what scenario plays out. I don't think Anthony Joshua is going to become undisputed. I don't. Is it possible? Sure. He's going to have to really go back to the drawing board and get better. But either way, I don't think it worked. But if you're Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn and his team, why wouldn't you prefer that scenario? Because here's another thing we have to think about. I think Anthony Joshua is chinny. I do. And I don't care how much heart you got, how much gut, or, you know, you can say he's a pussy or whatnot. You're chinny, you're chinny. It doesn't matter how tough you are or how, you're chinny, you're chinny. You can fight all you want, but if you get checked, you're going down. You're going down. You know, like you see with Amir Khan. I saw that dude lose a lot of fights that he may have been able to win if he wasn't so chinny. So... I mean, it's not guaranteed if you take that immediate rematch with Alessandro Usyk, you're going to win. And why felt fight for a few belts when you can fight for them all? This guy only has, in my opinion, a few fights left in him. Anthony Joshua, I don't think he has much left in terms of fighting more. Why not limit that as much as possible, but put yourself in a position to where when you're fighting, you're fighting for as much as you possibly can. And let's say Usyk loses to Tyson Fury, right? 
becomes the undisputed heavyweight champ of the world, people are going to be pushing for Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. Now, look, you guys, I don't understand all the politics of boxing. That's not my thing. The only reason I'm even talking about this type of politics is because I think there's so much at stake and so many interesting fights that can play out if Bob Arum's scenario manifests. So much interesting shit. That's why the, the only reason I'm interested in the politics. I don't like getting involved in the politics because you don't know what's going on in those negotiating rooms. You don't know what the true intent is. You, you don't know what the pros and cons are unless you're actually sitting there and wheeling and dealing. You can only freaking speculate. That's why I don't like messing with it. I know what I see in the ring when two fighters get in there and they fucking go head to head. That's real. You can't lie. You can't fake that. You know, we can talk about that, but we talking about the politics is very difficult. But this is a little bit different because there's a lot at stake and this could benefit boxing in general. The fans, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Alessandra Usyk, the promoters, everybody fucking wins. And hell, I know I didn't bring up Wilder, but he could he could he could become undisputed. And I would love to see, I think that would be an even more interesting matchup, Usyk versus Wilder. And I think, I tend to favor Usyk in that fight, but that still would be a very fascinating matchup. And if Wilder was able to beat Fury, obviously he would, he would have improved something. So we would be looking at a vastly improved boxer against a masterclass boxer in Usyk. And... <laughs> you know, just like, you can play out any timeline and it's going to be great. And I know a lot of people that say, well, why should Anthony Joshua get a title or a shot at Undisputed when he just lost to Usyk? Dude, I don't give a fuck. We all want to see that fight. And especially if Tyson Fury comes out on top, king of the hill, who wouldn't want to see Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury? Especially in the UK. They, oh, they would go crazy. They would go fucking crazy. We've seen worse in boxing than Anthony Joshua losing to one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world in Alessandra Usyk and him getting a chance to go undisputed. We've seen worse. We've seen fucking worse, you guys. It wouldn't bother me. And if you got to give him a tune up fight, but even with that, you got to be careful on who you're going to give to his tune up because, you know, once again, I think Anthony Joshua is chinny and. I don't think he matches. I think anybody in the top five of the heavyweight division is going to give him a lot of trouble. Maybe even top seven. So for me, I'm trying to limit this guy's fights as much as possible in terms of Anthony Joshua and give him the biggest paydays and the biggest opportunity to become undisputed heavyweight champ. Now, I get it. If you're Eddie Hearns and Anthony Joshua, maybe you want first dibs, right? You want first dibs. You want to be the first to do it in this era and become undisputed. But look, you had your chance. You fucking lost. Okay, you had your chance to step up and consolidate the belts, and you blew it. You don't even really deserve a rematch with Usyk. The only reason you're getting that is because you put it in the contract. But once again, and the only reason I'm talking about Anthony Joshua through, through this subject a lot is not because I'm rooting for him or, you know, I, I, I think he's going to, you know, redeem himself and become great. I'm just making the argument because I don't see this playing out unless it benefits Anthony Joshua in some sort of way. And I think it does. I think it does. So I'm praying that Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua and his team see that, you know what? This isn't a bad deal. I can sit back, let these guys duke it out, let, let everything set in, and then I can step in and fight for all the fucking stones and come back with this great redemption story and get paid like crazy. That's the way to do it, you guys. This is, would be brilliant and it benefits everybody. Everybody's gonna get a fair shake, everybody. But tell me what you guys think, comment below, like the video, subscribe if you're a new subscriber, dude, put it down in the comment section, try to encourage more people 
to join this family, man. It's it's a new family. We're starting this up. Uh, yeah, like I said, man, what do you guys think about this? Uh, I don't really understand all the politics in all, all the ins and outs, but this is very intriguing in the standpoint that it would create such a awesome situation for the heavyweight division. Um, once again, there's so many great things that can play out if Bob Arium's fucking suggestion goes through. So, uh, yeah, this is your boy Havoc with Final Round. Get at me.